Good afternoon to you. Mark's out of HurricaneTrack.com here. It's Wednesday, the 22nd of June, 2022, and you've tuned into the Hurricane Outlook and Discussion. Today, June, looking a lot like August out there. Look at that background map, part of our thumbnail and, and overall title page today. Yeah, that's what we would look at if it was August. All those tracks. What is that? Well, I'll explain that and more in today's update. All right, let's get started, shall we? First of all, a couple of things to point out here on the satellite animation this afternoon. This, my friends, is the leftovers of Bloss. That's what happens if you're a hurricane and you move into colder water and a less thermodynamically favorable environment. Um, the cold water will do it every time. I don't care how strong said hurricane or typhoon is when it gets into cooler water. That's it. So there you go. It lost the thermo thermodynamics and it is now just a remnant low a sack of bones out there, if you will, in the East Pack. This is a sheared tropical storm. How do I know that it is sheared? Well, look, the edges of it down here, the deep convection, it's rounded. Um, if it can get a little bit more to the west here, the clouds do try to fan out more evenly. There's less shear, but that is Celia, and it'll eventually try to become a hurricane, I think, and stay out here, eventually suffering the same fate as Bloss did. Um, elsewhere, look at this big old heat dome over the lower 48 and uh and really north america as a whole here uh, all the way down into mexico of course i mean wow just hot 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 but on the edges of the heat dome there are little impulses here and there even some rain and thunderstorms a lot of lightning out in california a little bit of an upper level low trying to swing its way in as well um, but generally a pretty benign pattern in this part of the western hemisphere so let's slide east a bit quite a bit um, first of all, we have, you can just kind of tell it's there if you know what you're looking for. Nice little area of low pressure sitting out here. Um, part of it is related to the TUT, the Tropical Upper Tropospheric Trough. And speaking of that, I just finished a few minutes ago a recording session over Zoom with Andy Hazelton down at the University of Miami and HRD. And we talked about the TUT and how that relates to climatology and the pros and cons of how the TUT interacts with tropical systems, a special edition of Hurricane U. I will edit that all together and post it here before the end of the week on YouTube and on Facebook. So check that out when I have it ready. It's like a guest lecturer coming in to help expand our collective minds. So yeah, we'll talk about the TUT, uh, but it's there. You can just kind of tell there's something going on here and that's that TUT sitting out there. Way far away though from the TUT is this, a tropical wave in between the two, nothing. Pretty quiet, nice and dry, well, relatively speaking anyway, with no systems to worry about. But out here, these are the features that are getting a lot of people talking. There's a tropical wave there, a little bit of vorticity down there. I'll show you that in a minute. Another impulse getting ready to move off of Africa, and then more energy trying to gather eventually over interior Africa that will eventually make its way offshore, all of that energy. So this is cool. I show this often during the season and I showed it this morning during the What's Up in the Tropics segment. Uh, the total precipitable water, the blues, generally dry air, your yellows and especially your oranges, and the deeper the orange, and then eventually into that sort of purplish color. Within those oranges, that is a lot of available precipitable water to be wrung out of the atmosphere. That's what this shows us in very simple terms. And so what do we got? Well, here, that's a pretty good area of moisture that has worked its way out into the Atlantic, really helping to subdue the Saharan air layer. There's some Saharan air being ejected out, but look how far north it is of 20 degrees north latitude, which is right through here. You know what? Let's highlight it in red because it's important. There we go. 20 degrees north latitude. Uh, most of the driest there. There's some down here, but that's not near this guy. That's the tropical wave. There's another piece of energy here. I'm just saying there is some chance that because of this moisture surge out ahead of uh, these tropical features here, these impulses of energy, the Saharan air layer is not very prevalent. So we have to watch these. There's at least a chance of some amplification. Um, and that is to say that these systems try to develop a little bit. And at the very least, maybe we can hope, and this is the positive side of this, for some moisture, as long as it's not too much, uh, for our friends in the islands, you know, from the windwards, the leewards, St. John, our good friend Brent down there. Remember, I showed you the dust picture the other day from his vehicle. You guys could really use some rainfall down here. So maybe this moisture 
is destined to head your way if it's just not too intense, if you get my drift. We don't have any control over that. you got to be careful what you wish for, but this is a good sign that maybe, just maybe, we can get some moisture in here as these tropical waves make their way off to the west. And we can see a little bit of that energy here reflected in the vorticity signature right there. It's not much, but it's a little bit pretty low in latitude. It's going to move off to the west and west-northwest with time, uh, probably about, I don't know, 15 to 20 knots on average uh, on a westerly course. A little bit more energy sitting over Africa and some more even farther back. Uh, to the east than that near Ethiopia. So, yeah, it's kind of early in the year to be watching this far east. And then you get maps like this. Um, I mean, this is what we look at in August, seriously. Now, this doesn't mean this is what's going to happen. This is the ensemble prediction system from the Euro. Lots of ensemble members, all the what-ifs. And, yeah, a lot of them do try to develop something in the vicinity of, well, I mean, I guess the Genesis is a little bit farther to the south and east. And that's a lot of lines heading to the west, a lot of them towards land. And if you read the legend, yeah, some of them are in the reds there, which indicates 960 millibars or lower air pressure. You never know. But this is not what we look at usually in June, you know, the latter part of June. This is a late August through September and October type of map. So why are we seeing this? What is triggering this? Well, we go back to this. And I should have brought up the anomalies map, but that's fine. You know, water temperatures all throughout this area are warmer than average. The moisture is more uh, plentiful, as I showed you here on this TPW product. The energy is there from these tropical waves. So it's triggering the models to sort of go a little bit haywire. They're probably overdoing it. Because I'm, as I'm going to show you in a minute, the operational, and how do what does that mean? I'll try to explain this quickly. The operational is kind of like the main conductor. You know what I mean? It's like the chief, so to speak. And then the ensembles do make up, just like in an orchestra, the ensembles, so the, the members of an ensemble, the wind ensemble, the whole orchestra, whatever. You got your main conductor, and then you've got the ensemble pieces. I mean, that's a good way to put it. But in this case, in meteorology, these are your what ifs. And the operational is a little bit different. I'll show you that. But what is happening, though, is there's enough out there in the whole picture to at least trigger these models so that it's not just blank. Normally, your 15-day tropical cyclone tracks in late June wouldn't look like this. That is a fact. And something's triggering it. And it's interesting. you got a little cluster here off the uh, Mid-Atlantic from a little impulse that could come across and maybe develop as it heads out into the Atlantic. We'll wait and see about that. That is a fairly common thing to have happen. So a lot of the ensembles, and that's, that's what we're seeing. Look at all those lines in there. That means a lot of the different members, not just one or two, are seeing, quote unquote, the potential for something to develop off the mid-Atlantic and down here in the deep tropics from our tropical energy, these tropical waves coming off of Africa. So something's making these models say this. I say say, you know, it's air quotes, right? Something is triggering this, and it's not because the models suck. I hate it when people say that. That's not what it is. These are guidance. The model is for guidance. It's not, this is what's going to happen. So something's making this happen, and it's not because it's a faulty model. It's because of the background state. This is a symptom of what is coming. That is the most important thing to take away from this. This will happen in August and September, and it's showing us the way in June. I think that's the most important part of what we're seeing here, whether or not something actually develops out of here. And I'm really rooting for at least a vigorous tropical wave to bring some moisture to this area. That would be great because you could really use it. Yes, there are the other hazards, gusty winds, the potential of some flash flooding, lightning strikes, in any thunderstorms. I mean, most weather doesn't come without consequences or impacts, but you do need the water. You need the moisture so we can at least root for that collectively, I hope. All right, so that's the ensemble from last night. What about the operational from today? This is the same model, the ECMWF, uh, and it's a different part of the atmosphere than what I showed you. The other one's just your tracks. This is the uh, 850 millibar level. And this is the initial 
Ization, and let me just go back to this guy. Uh, you see this little impulse right here. I showed you that on the vorticity chart. Well, it shows up very nice in the Euro analysis right there. There it is. So the Euro sees it, quote unquote. All right, it's there. Um, and this is about 5,000 feet in the atmosphere. So let's see what happens with this and, and, and other impulses as they go uh, across the Atlantic. So this is 24 hours out. And I know you're going to say, why don't you use the other Euro? I will, I got to remember that it's there. The one that Levi puts on that's, I think, every three hours. We'll do that tomorrow. I promise. So for today, bear with me. We'll do the, uh, the 24 hour increments. So there's the little piece of energy that comes off the mid-Atlantic. And you know, that could spin up really quickly into a very short-lived, weak tropical system over the Gulf Stream. That's possible. Our other feature at 48 hours is sitting out here somewhere in the tropical Atlantic. And then at 72 hours, the uh, the system that might develop off the mid-Atlantic heading up towards and just south of Nova Scotia without much fanfare. But you notice at 72 hours, the euro doesn't have a lot out here. There's some energy down here, stretched out as it may be. Big old high-pressure area in control. The, the trade winds, yeah, fairly brisk. Like I said, it'll probably move across that tropical wave, yeah, about 20 knots or so. Uh, day four, 96 hours. There we go. A little bit of an amplification of that feature. Another one right here. And again, let's hope for some rain down here. That would be good as just long as it's not too much. And you know, we can all agree to that. Day five, maybe running into South America. It's, it's possible because again, look, it's June, still June. And the, the high pressure is still pretty dominant here and pretty far to the south. This all has to lift north. We're still a couple of months away from that happening. Eh, maybe four weeks or something, five, six weeks, something like that. It's, it's late June. This is, you know, stuff should run into South America. It's not supposed to come north and give us a, a year like 2005. That was an incredible anomaly. And thank goodness that we don't have that all the time. Um, anyhow, moving on along day six, day seven, and we'll just stop there. You know, maybe some energy over here in the Southwest Caribbean, another piece of energy approaching the windwards and maybe something in the Gulf. You never know. I'm just saying the operational, not too enthusiastic on development. The ensembles, those what ifs, they're going to do what they're going to do. And we'll just watch and see. Um, but it is interesting. It certainly is interesting that we're seeing this pattern trying to set up. And it is only late June. It's got my attention. I'm watching it. I'm taking notice. But there's nothing to worry about just yet. I still think it is, though, showing us the way. And that way will happen probably more towards August. But you never know. Something could come of it. You never say never. That's why we do this. We look at it together. We discuss things, or at least I point them out to you. We talk about it in the comments. We talk about it over on Discord uh, as part of our Patreon. And we make sense of everything the best that we can. And you never know. A map like that, you know, something might happen, but probably not. But that doesn't mean it won't. That's not the same as zero. And it's not the same as 100%. Those are the only absolutes. Zero and 100 when you're talking percentages. Anyway, that's it. I'm done. Let's get out of here. I will post the uh, Hurricane U segment with Andy Hazelton, hopefully tomorrow. If not tomorrow, then certainly by Friday. All right. Have a great rest of your Wednesday. Thanks, as always, for giving me a piece of your day. Don't forget, subscribe to the YouTube channel. Hopefully you like it. Hit the thumbs up and punch that notification bell right on the nose for me so that you get notified if you want to. If you don't want to, that's okay. I won't cry over it, but hopefully you do, and you'll be notified when I post a video. All right, I am Mark Sutteth, Hurricane Track. I'll be back with more for you tomorrow morning with What's Up in the Tropics.